What do you think are the top 10 new pandas methods in all of Python code? Take a piece of paper, a pen, write down your guesses and we'll find out at the end of this video. I'm not sure everybody uses the PD alias. It took 12 hours to parse. Do I really need to know that it's called on a data frame? This doesn't look good. And some of them may be surprising. But first we need the dataset. Where can we find a lot of Python code to analyze? I wonder if anyone tried downloading all of the Python code from GitHub. Well, apparently someone did try to download all of the Jupyter notebooks from GitHub. Let's download that and give it a try. Eight hours later. I finally downloaded all of the notebooks inside this hard drive. It's 270 gigas compressed and 600 gigas uncompressed so that's a that's a that's big data right worse but i have no clue how to start this project and i'm pretty sure my laptop cannot manage 600 gigas of data in memory should i use a distributed library like PySpark or dask to manipulate all of this data or should i rent a virtual machine in the cloud for this common line tools can be 200 times faster than your hadoop cluster okay we're ditching big data and going full Python. First, I don't have enough storage on my SSD to unzip all 600 gigas of data. But we probably don't need all of the notebooks anyway. I mean, we're only looking for notebooks that contain the word pandas for import pandas. Is there a way to extract only the notebooks that contain the word pandas without extracting everything? Python has got the zip file module that you can use to manipulate the zip archives. So we can use it to list all of the files inside a zip archive and then for each notebook inside the archive, because it's only a JSON, we can actually process it line by line looking for the word pandas. And if it doesn't contain the word pandas, we just don't uncompress it. About 36% of the notebooks actually contain the word pandas. That should be around 200 gigas uncompressed. And I know I can use that on my SSD, so let's go for it. So I ran it. It took about an hour to complete, so nice job, Python. 200 gigas is still a lot of data, and we don't need all of it. If you open a notebook, you'll notice you've got a lot of output with images in base64, you've got markdown cells with a lot of text and description, and all of this is not helping the data analysis, so we need to get rid of it. Now try to open any Jupyter notebook with a text editor. It's all JSON. If you've got a good eye, you'll notice all of the cells you are interested in fall under the cell type equals code, so I could parse the JSON for each notebook to only retrieve those code cells. But because we are analyzing so many notebooks, I'm not really sure if the JSON schema of a notebook has changed between all of those years, and I don't even know how to validate the JSON of a notebook. For this kind of trouble, I've got a saying. PyPy is like the Python App Store. You will find a lot of Jupyter related libraries, and one of them caught my eye, NB Format. A Python API to manipulate notebook structure, it even returns a Python representation of each notebook as a list of dictionaries, each dictionary representing a cell with its metadata and input and output content. I ran the NB format validation and code extraction on my 200 gigas of data and it got me the Python code of around 400,000 notebooks. All this Python code has string ready to be analyzed. Next step, how do we actually detect that a pandas call has been made inside Python code? I could try and run some regex on it, like look for all of the pd.something in the text. The thing is, I'm not even sure that everybody uses the import pandas as pd alias. And what if there are new lines between the pd and the methods that are being used? Or what if those are chained methods so I'm not able to detect the group by merge etc. And I don't like regular expression so I need to find another way. Have you ever wondered how Python is run? Python code is first parsed and tokenized from a list of characters forming the file to a list of words that Python can understand like if or while or variable names. Then those tokens are used to build an abstract syntax tree, a high level representation of the program code. Finally, the AST is compiled into bytecode. It looks like if I can get a hold of the AST, I should be able to walk the tree and fetch all of the nodes with pandas calls in the code. And the cool thing, Python provides the AST 
module natively to help parse and traverse the syntax tree for you. See, there really is Python for everything. So I read for an hour about tree traversals and walking trees and trees and trees and it really looked like an interview question for Fang, but I finally managed to walk the syntax tree for each Python code. That way I'm able to see the pandas alias and then for each node see if that pandas alias is used to call a method. I just had a small issue. A lot of Python code could not be parsed by AST. Whoa. What? I dug back into the Jupyter Notebooks, turns out AST cannot process some of the lines in those Jupyter Notebooks. And those lines are in almost every Jupyter Notebook. Can you guess those lines? Those are IPython magics and this is not Python code so AST doesn't know how to deal with them. And you know what? If AST doesn't know how to process one line of your Python code, away so I need to get rid of those ipython magics. I finally stumbled upon the ipython input transformer module and it has a transform cell method that converts ipython syntax into python syntax and now AST is able to parse the code and give me back all of the nodes that I want. Let's run AST on our 400,000 python codes. Oh it took 12 hours to run. I also noticed my CPU was locked at 25% the whole time. One core out of my five cores. So I guess I could have used multi-core processing, distributing the AST processing of Jupyter Notebooks around the different cores, but meh, I didn't do it. <sighs> I just ran the 12 hours processing the thing is I forgot to save the result as a pickle on my laptop and I restarted the Jupyter server and, and I lost everything. Yeah, I just lost 12 hours of processing. Yeah. So... <sighs> so in the end I installed Joblib which is a whopper around multi-core processing for Python. I didn't want to install Dask because I had a point to prove that we don't need big data libraries. Also at the same time with Dask you do multiple processing too. I didn't, really didn't want to configure Dask. Joblib seemed easier to do so I used Joblib and distributing the processing was easy to do. And when I ran the processing my CPU was at 100% all of the time. Great. And it took 2 hours. Yeah, 2 hours instead of 12. Python, why are you single core? <laughs> Apparently, it only parsed 60% of the notebooks. And I think that's because 60% of the notebooks are using Python 3 and the other 40% are using Python 2. And my Python 3 AST is only able to parse Python 3 code. I need to create a Python 2 environment to process the 40% remaining. I tried. I created a Python 2 environment. I tried installing stuff. I had... I had errors everywhere, setup tools was not behaving, I had, I had Python 2 deprecation warnings everywhere. Well, you know what, I'm going to drop those 40%. We still have 270,000 codes to analyze, so let's go for that. This is it. We have extracted, parsed, and computed the AST tree of 270,000 Python code from GitHub. The first thing I want to confirm, do people actually run things like import pandas as NP or is that a meme? Let's list all of the import pandas aliases and see how it goes. <laughs> There are people actually calling import pandas as adorable. That's so cute. There are two whatever aliases. That must be a pissed off data scientist. There's Speedy Bear and Teddy. Uh... 
there's import pandas as Desmond. Okay, okay, I'm distracting myself from the real goal, which are the most used pandas methods in those 270,000 Python codes. Let's start small and easy and check out top level model goals like PD data frame or PD get dummies. For each notebook, I identify the alias that has been used for importing pandas and then look for any method call that comes from this alias. So I looked if people actually uses different aliases in the same notebook and it turns out that a thousand data scientists did. I hate this analysis. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I don't care anymore, I delete those thousand notebooks. And also, some notebooks actually never import pandas. Let's delete those two. I'm only going to count distinct method calls, so if a notebook contains a thousand data frame calls, I'm going to count it only as one call. Are you ready to find out the most used top level pandas call? Here they are! We are only getting top level calls here. What if some people do df merge instead of pd merge? What about data frame object calls like df columns or df shape or df group by? Also, we don't detect anything about chain methods here. But then I realized an even worse problem. What if notebooks are using external scripts or modules? How do I count data frame method calls if I'm not able to detect the variables in the Python code that are actually data frames. But as I was reading the pandas documentation, I mean, I know group by is a data frame method. Do I really need to check group by is used on an actual data frame? I only need to know if a method called on something is a pandas method. If I'm able to find the full list of pandas and data frame methods, I can walk through the AST again and for each method call check if it's inside the list of methods. I may get some false positives, but honestly that's worth the shot. Now I need to find the list of all pandas methods. Well, I went to Twitter for that. A good Twitter friend of mine and another Streamlit creator suggested using the inspect module to get all live members in the pandas package. This is mind blowing. I ran inspect on pandas and pandas data frame to get all of the methods and then I walked all calls in all ASTs again to find out if each call was in one of those arrays. I'm pretty sure most of the data scientists use methods from the top level or from data frame so I'm only going to use those two and yes I was struggling on time. If you want to do the analysis yourself I've open sourced my code so here you go. We met so many Python tools on this journey. I mean, look, we did not have to use any of the big data tools on the 600 gigas of data. Before giving the final result, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of those small but quirky explorations. Remember, it's in the journey, not the destination. But anyway, tell me in the comments if you've got all 10 guesses right. Here are the final results. If you want to rant about the way I analyze the data, my comments are open, or just watch another video of mine, it's probably a Python app recommended by the YouTube algorithm. In any case, bye!